This one is called ReZero. How about them Appas? And you're gonna say, what do you mean Appas? Apparently, this is like a giga brain, crazy schizo theory posting video. I'm down. Let's get it. The world of RE0 is full of various types of elemental ma- What? The world of RE0 is f- <laughs> We starting strong! Not RE0 guys, RE0. Oh my god, I never thought about it. Is it really RE0? Did Tape confirm that it's RE0 or it's RE0? Hold the fuck up! Full of various types of elemental magic, warrior arts, mm -hmm. fantastical beasts, demi-humans, and reality-bending superpowers from the fearsome Witch of Envy. It would thus be easy to overlook something as unassuming as a <laughs> His t-shirt. T-Rex hates push-ups. Because his arms are so short, it doesn't even reach the ground. These are chin-ups. Assuming as a little red fruit with a slightly different name. Appa! Ringa rather than Ringo in the Japanese. And apple? for us, Appa. subtitled as Appa rather than Apple. Yeah. Yet as you watch the series, it's hard not to notice how often Appas show up around our main character, Subaru. This is true. The Appas are shown a lot of times, but I never really... Are there any Easter eggs with the Appas that I should be aware of? Two of the four reset points we see in the first season are in front of the same Appa vendor. Yeah. And so Appas would repeatedly be the first thing he would see when brought back through the power he dubbed Return by Death. Rue? A power he received seemingly as part of the process of being summoned to this world and a mark of favor from the aforementioned Witch of Envy, mm -hmm. enemy Satala? of the world. Now, this video is based on observations we made during our rewatch of all anime adaptations in the spring, and so spoilers for all of the director's cut, OVAs, and shorts are possible. Um, the only spoilers I think will be have to do with the post credit scene of, uh, the finale, because we watched the original. We've watched both OVAs, Memory Snow, and, uh, what's it called? Frozen Bond. I don't know about the season one shorts, but I'm fine with these spoilers. It, it's whatever. We just go raw dog it. However, no information from the source or Season 2 promotional material is included. Got it. So please don't share any of that in the comments either. This is part of a short series to hype up our live okay. coverage of the upcoming Season 2. So then, to return- Get hyped guys. Season 2 ReZero, it's in production. Y'all saw the trailer reaction, man. It's coming. Turn to our main subject. How about- Director's kind of significant. It's a major spoiler. <sighs> Instead of crying in my chat that it's a huge spoiler, why don't you actually go fucking watch the video and then link me the part where it's an actual fucking spoiler, huh? Why don't you lazy fucks go to the video right now and give me a timestamp of when the spoilers are? Them Appas. Apples in our world have a variety of symbolic meanings and associations depending on the culture. They're uh, apples. An apple away keeps the doctor away. I don't know anything beyond that. There's several in Greek mythology, such as the apple of discord, the golden apple. Oh, also, you know, it's the forbidden fruit, right? Now, was the forbidden fruit an apple in, in, in like the Garden of Eden? The, what was the forbidden fruit was an apple, right? In Heracles tasks, plus the goddess of love was associated with apples, which I'll explore a little. Stop fucking arguing in chat and go to the fucking video and give me the timestamp of where the spoiler happens, you lazy piece of shit. Further in tomorrow's video on stars in RE0. Yet perhaps the- RE0. There's a stars video too, huh? Okay. The most famous association for apples is the forbidden fruit in the yes. story of Bible. the Garden, Garden. of Eden. Whether they- Yo! Is this the Kurohebi? From Frozen Bond? Yo! <laughs> it was there in front of us the whole time! The Black Serpent! Oh my god! Whether they were actually meant to be apples or a different food is a debate that is besides the point. In centuries of art and popular understanding, the fruit of the Tree of Knowledge eaten by Adam and Eve mm -hmm. is represented as a shiny red apple like the ones that are all over the series. Apis. Their catastrophic case of the munchies results in humanity's expulsion from paradise, as well as something else. <laughs> Did he just call the... Because like Eve got... 
Eve got ri Eve got tempted by the snake, right? The girl. There's like a, basically, if you don't know about the story of this, you should know it. Base. I'm not sure if I even know it properly, but long time ago, there's this Adam and Eve, right? There's a guy and a girl. These are like the founding human and uh, man and woman, and. And for whatever reason, God put him in a garden. And the garden was amazing. You could do anything in the garden, bro. It's heaven. It's a sanctuary. But there's one thing you can't do. One thing you can't do. Do not eat the forbidden fruit. And then the black snake <laughs> you see in Frozen Bond, it tempted Eve. And Eve took a bite of that apple and God got mad. And then they were cast out. And that was like the introduction of the... Origin sins, maybe that relates to the seven deadly sins. What would what would that be? Would that be gluttony, greed? I'm not really sure. So that is relevant to our series. This act of disobedience. It was Adam. What Adam ate the apple? No. Are you gaslighting me right now? It was the girl that ate the apple, wasn't it? It was you. <laughs> Oh my god. You know how we're arguing right now in the ReZero videos about whether or not Subaru saw the unseen hand and like other things and we're like, well, until the author says something. Okay, what are we gonna do? We gonna get the fucking author of the Bible now? What, what, what? You gonna gaslight me until we get the fucking author of the Bible to fucking let us know that yes, it was indeed Eve that ate the apple in Ark Zero. Come on, man. Obedience is how sin comes into the world. The original sin. The concept of sin mm. is present in RE0. That's right. Specifically, the seven deadly sins. Yes. Satella is the witch of envy, envy. but we also meet Betelgeuse, who is the. <laughs> I don't know if he's trolling or not. Because he says RE0. And I think this is dry humor. <laughs> Betelgeuse, he, he's memeing, right? He's, he's memeing. Th this is dry humor. Satella is the Witch of Envy, but we also meet Betelgeuse, who is the Sin Archbishop of Sloth. Sloth. We'll also have Puck make an offhand comment connecting the White Whale to gluttony, right? To gluttony. Yes. And crucially, Betelgeuse will suggest that Subaru oh is Pride, mm. or perhaps could be the Archbishop of Pride. If yeah, right, because the position is empty right now, and time after time, We've seen Subaru not even like indirectly, but directly state that he's a prideful person. And quite often he gets overconsumed by pride. It's not the only sin that is exhibited by Subaru, but it's definitely a main component in season one. If he so chooses. We know from Betelgeuse that there are six seats for archbishops yep. corresponding to- For whatever reason, there's only six though, right? Because there's seven sins, but six. And what do we know? Well, we know that the Witch of Envy consumed the other six witches, so I can't help but wonder, maybe the position of Envy does not exist. These sins, with Satella presumably fulfilling the role of Envy. Pride, Envy, Gluttony, and Sloth so far, yep. it seems we should expect to meet Wrath, Greed, and Lust along the way. If we haven't already. Now, in the story of Eden, eating the- What is it? Wait, 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 wait. One of the six archbishops. So, yeah, yeah, we know there's seven witches, but there's, yeah, but there's only six archbishops. There's no seven archbishops. There's only six, right? My interpretation of this is, is correct, right? Even though there's seven sins, and even if the position of pride is empty right now, there's still only six archbishops, right? Yes. Responding to these sins, with Satella presumably fulfilling the role of envy. Yep, yep, yep. Pride, envy, gluttony, and sloth so far. It seems we should expect to meet wrath, greed, and lust along Maybe the soon. way. If we haven't already. What is Regulus? And I'm not asking for an answer here. Because, like, we got quote-unquote spoiled. It's not really a huge spoiler. It was a funny characteristic of anything. That dude has so many wives. He has to be lust, right? Because, like, or, or gluttony? That you have so many wives? Or maybe greed. You're greedy, so you have so many wives? I feel like the order of what Regulus could be is probably lust, it makes sense. But maybe it's gluttony or greed, but I doubt it's those two. It's, it's gotta be lust. He's got so many wives. Now, in the story of Eden, eating the apple of the tree of knowledge is an act of disobedience because Adam and Eve knew that mm. they were prohibited to partake. That's right. They were tempted by the serpent. And so the apple came- The black snake, guys! The black serpent mentioned in Frozen Bond! Came to represent temptation itself. 
a thing offered that may lead one astray. What I want to call attention to, then, is despite how often Subaru is around Appa's, mm -hmm. he never actually takes a bite. I would have to go back and watch every episode, but I'm going to just assume that he's done his due diligence. He's never eaten an Appa. And what does that mean, right? From the lore of the Bible, you take a bite of that, that's something you're not supposed to do. That's being sinful. But Subaru not taking a bite means that he's not sinful? At first, he has no money and so can't buy an Appa, Broke. though it seems he would like to. This is still true on his first reset, when he comes back to life with an Appa literally held out to him. On his second reset, he is disoriented. And the so then what? Is the Appa vendor now also the fucking snake? Is the Appa vendor supposed to be the black snake that introduces origin sin to the humans? Like, wh where are we going with this right now, bro? Hold out to him. On his second reset, he is disoriented, okay. and the Appa vendor takes pity on him. I mean, think about it too! Appa guy was a fucking checkpoint! He's a literal checkpoint! He tries to tempt Subaru to take a bite of the apple! Holy shit! Wait a moment! He is offering him an Appa for free this time, and Subaru almost takes hold of it. But he says Instead, not. he catches sight of Amelia. <sighs> Where are we going with this? This is peak schizo theory crafting right now. And runs off before ever grasping our symbol of temptation. In the mansion arc, when he successfully saves the village children from their doom, yeah. one of the families will attempt to reward him with a gift of Appas. But we reject it! Wha Give me one more example. Okay, two examples, maybe still that way. Third? No, there's something else going on here. There's something going on here! Which he refuses. So far, so good. Despite the proximity to Appas, he has not yet taken any, and though he has died a number of times, the thing he cares about, being close to Amelia, Amelia. has gone rather well. Yeah? It won't last. In fact, when he returns with her to the capital, one of the first things he does is revisit the Appa vendor. Yeah. And this time... And we also interact with Priscilla and even give her an apple. He comes away with a bag of trouble. Yeah. Immediately after this, Subaru will meet Julius, which starts his jealous... So the Appas are supposed to represent some sort of trouble that could bloom if Subaru takes it. Because Subaru this time actually took the Appas, immediately we're thrown into the situation where he's consumed by wrath, envy, because Julius is showing chivalry to Amelia. Immediately after this, Subaru will meet Julius, which uh. starts his jealous, insecure That's misbehavior. Right. That's While right. waiting on Amelia, he will run into Priscilla, Priscilla, to whom he will actually offer an apple. Yes, we actually, and this is the one moment where he actually did riz a Priscilla. Which she does bite, creating an association that will factor into the next day. And she bought, she, she bit it? She actually bit it? I, I don't remember. That will fact While waiting on Amelia, he will run into Priscilla, to whom he will actually offer an apple, which she does bite, okay. creating an association that will factor into the next day. What does that mean? If Subaru is the one giving the apples away, if the apples are supposed to represent origin sin and the temptations, Priscilla took a bite of it, what does that mean? Back where they are staying in the city, Rem will be holding the Appas in the scene where Subaru is told he cannot go to the royal selection, and he yeah. makes the promise that he fails to keep. Yeah, and then Rem glazes and says, yeah, I'll just like turn a blind eye. You can go and fuck it up with Amelia. The next day, Rem will actually be holding the Appas again, this time in a display dish. What the She will fuck? also make an Appa-related excuse for why she would not have seen Subaru sneaking off to go to the selection despite his pledge. The actual way he gets in is due to Priscilla, yep. who remembered him from the previous day. And now, in that Priscilla moment, it's still my head cannon, and maybe, you know, I, I might be right, but I'm probably wrong. The fact that she says everything in this world just, you know, works out for me, I just, I'm always in an advantageous spot. When Subaru called for a dragon carriage and Priscilla's ones immediately showed up, I feel like that's some sort of divine protection or blessing. Even jokingly introduces him as her Appa carrier. Yep. This gets him into the Royal Selection Hall, where he will proceed to make a grand fool of himself. White knight in front of white knights. And then he makes it worse. And then he makes it worse still. Yeah. The thing. And what's the relationship here? That he actually took the Appas this time? He cared about is now slipping away from him. In fact, it was all downhill from the moment he accepted he the, the Appas at the vendor. 
Hum. So the general theme of how, again, Appa's right, origin sin, you know, Adam and Eve don't eat in ReZero, sorry, RE0, if you ever see an Appa in the scene and someone has taken it, something sinful might happen or something bad might happen. Super actually taking the Appa has caused this downfall here. Now, causation is not correlation. Just because it seems like this is happening and then there's other actions or byproducts of those actions doesn't mean that there's a direct deep meaning set up by Tapu. But, but it is still happening. It is still happening. And maybe Tape is just sprinkling little Easter eggs. I could totally see him doing that. And it doesn't stop there. The attempts to save the mansion fail one after the other, yeah. leading Subaru to low point after low point as he must experience the deaths of most of the people he had been getting to know and care about. Each time he fails and dies, he is back in front of the Appa vendor, with Rim dutifully holding another bag of the fruit. In fact, even Petro will be carrying Petra. Appas in- And that's why that bitch got her eyes gouged out by the cult members. Yep, my head cannon. I know that episode 17 is after the episode that Petra got her eyes gouged out. That was previous episodes, but still my head cannon. One iteration, right before Subaru's lowest point, when Amelia is killed in front of him, and in the next loop, he tries to simply run away. Now, here is what I think is the crazy part. Oh shit, he's about to cook. He's about to just drop the biggest conspiracy. What is it? On that next loop, when Subaru grabs Rim and runs, Rim will drop the Appas. Okay. In fact, we're treated to a close-up, slow-motion, dramatic- slow mo. Holy sh- and this is episode 18, where everything gets good again. As Rem built Subaru up, you're my hero, I love Amelia. Everything happened with the Appas falling down in slow motion, people discarding the Appas. <sighs> Dude, this is crazy. This is insane. Slow motion. Not random apples falling. Slow motion. Now, it could again just be causation, not correlation, just the symbolism. Or, or, or Tape is actually sprinkling in these things that hints at the grand scheme of the seven deadly sins, origin sin, Appa. No, I think this might be intentional, guys. Am I crazy? Is the earth flat? Did the moon landing get faked? Are the Appas actually supposed to represent sin in this show? Oh my god. Oh my god. I think it is. And, and the video is still not over yet. We still have one third left. Like rendering of them hitting the ground. We are meant to see them being discarded. What? What happens after this is the from zero conversation between Rem and Subaru. Where she also, yeah, one other thing to note. This is the anime. Did this shit happen in the light novel? Do you see illustrations of the Appas falling like that or, or other key moments? Do they exist? Or is the... So if it is, then maybe Top Page just kind of whispered to the anime directors like, you know what? Just do something fun with the Appas and maybe that's what it is. But still, it's very interesting. She basically saves him from his despair and turns the entire story around. All of <laughs> Real quote from the novel. And the Appas fell in slow motion. Mm, true, brother. True, brother. Right out of the passage from the light novel. These are facts. <laughs> the things that had gone so wrong since first accepting the Appas begin to go right again after they are tossed to the ground. In fact, despite how often they were around up to that point, Appas never appear in the rest of the season. Hmm. So then, if they were meant to represent temptation for Subaru, what was being offered? Rim is... If it's supposed to be temptation for Subaru, what's offered? A cheap way of satisfaction, running away from his problems? What were they? Frequently the one holding them was the temptation to run away with her, yes. to flee his shame, forgetting Amelia and- The sloth what if route. And everyone else. Petro will also be one who holds Appas. And at the very end of the director's cut makes it plain that she fancies Subaru. Is he being- That's the only spoiler. We kind of knew that. So now the pecking order, Amelia at the top, then Patrash, then Petra, then Rem. Tempted here, maybe not so much by Petra, but by the simple, uninvolved life of a villager. After all, 
he did have a moment in the first arc where he considered selling his phone and mm -hmm. living a life of luxury rather than getting involved with Amelia once again. I really wonder what would have happened if he did that. I wonder if Satala would even allow him to do that. Because the, I still think that the power is given to him specifically to keep Amelia at bay and protect her until the day of the ordeal. Until basically keep my vessel warm and ready. Which I bet some fucked up shit would have happened and for whatever reason he would die even if he's trying to just live out alone. Or maybe Betelgeuse had the right of it, and the seat of pride would be Subaru's should he seek it. I think that like... I don't know. I know that the pride if route exists, and a lot of people correlate that to the like Arc 1, but like, even right now, is it too late to become the Archbishop of Pride? Maybe. The, the reason I ask that is, it's the gospel. The way that the gospel just keeps returning to Subaru, the way that he even signed the gospel with his blood in the end, the finale of season one, that should blew my mind. Remember, and, and, and also how the gospel, Betrugus's gospel specifically, we were flipping through the pages and it was blank. And a couple theories I had there, right? I think one of the first theories is like, oh, maybe the patch notes didn't hit because we think the gospel has some sort of instructions, a guide, because Betrugus constantly refers to it to check if something is supposed to happen or not, right? I'm not sure exactly who would give the patch notes, but maybe that's one theory. The next theory is that's simply all Betrugus was set up to do. The pages are blank because you've done your purpose, and your purpose was to... Deliver the gospel to Subaru. And now that he signs it with his blood in finale, does that mean that the ownership has now been confirmed? That's gotta be some significant moment. When he wrote in the gospel with this fucking blood, that cannot be a random event. No way for a show like RE0. There's gotta be something more. So I'm like, does this mean now that gospel has been delivered to Subaru, therefore potential of becoming Archbishop of Pride is even more, even though Pride if route already exists in different routes, I'm not sure. His own pride nearly led him to disaster already, so perhaps this would be a powerful temptation in the right circumstance. Who knows what perks might come with such a role? Because the last thing to talk about is the nature of the perk that Subaru already enjoys. What is it? You see, the temptation in the Garden of Eden was for fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Eating of it caused Adam and Eve to have their eyes opened. Woke. It was knowledge that was forbidden. Super that part I actually didn't really understand. Right. I think that uh, in the beginning they were fine with being naked, right? Yeah. They were fine with just being naked and just like frolicking in the Garden of Eden. But as Eve ate the fruit, they gained knowledge, origin sense, and even understood that like, oh, we should hide our genitals and stuff like that. It's kind of embarrassing, right? That doesn't happen unless you fucking have <laughs> next level of intellect, I guess. Bruce's power isn't being restored to life. Simply dying and repeating would yeah. be no advantage. No, the real- The witch's miasma does stack up, but it does wane off after a time, right? It's not a- it's not a new baseline that's set. Every time he dies, the witch's miasma does get bigger for sure, but it does taper down as time goes by. The power is that he remembers what happened. Yeah. He knows how events will unfold in certain circumstances, which is information that no one else has. Okay, true. Just ha knowing the events of the past timelines and using them to his advantage maybe is the trade-off. I thought that like, of course there's that, but I, th I still feel like the witch's miasma stacking up is still also like a really helpful thing. Even if you may not think so. I, I don't know. It has to. Satala loves this guy. Intentionally, the witch's stance grows. We've seen multiple times of when the AoE taunts by spiking the witch's miasma can be helpful to use him as a bait. But also beyond that, like... Ugh, my head cannon still is that episode 15, right? The unseen hand. You couldn't see it. No, it's not the fucking cave. He couldn't see it. Apparently, Tape confirmed in a Q&A. But some motherfucker is not coming to me saying, Well, actually... Tape is known to lie, so therefore that is not true. So now I'm being gaslit, even if I have the author of the fucking show confirming it. But regardless, he, whether or not he can see it or not, after that, he could see it after he dies. So I thought that Miasma stacking up suddenly created this new threshold of him being able to see cult powers. What he gets from Satila's gift of return by death is forbidden knowledge. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Having all the memories 
and understanding how different events will fold out so that in the perfect runs, it just seems stupid. Like, think of it from Better Goose's perspective of this random kid that shows up, said that the fucking gospel, he just left it at home or used it at a coaster or some other shit, and, and, and then all his plans get foiled, right? It's because he had this forbidden knowledge, because he's failed and knows all the different things to counter everybody. The shiny red fruit of Eden granted insight to those who ate it, and in exchange, sin was birthed into the world. Okay. Including, of course, the seven most deadly. Subaru has the knowledge granted by a rewinding time, and yep. the sins already exist. Yep. It would seem this is already a world of paradise lost. But that leads me to a last thought. What? I pointed out to the discarded Appas and how everything seemed to turn around after that event. Yeah. Yet the other archbishops remain. Satella remains and whispers in his ear, and more trials certainly await. Well, yeah, because it's still season one, right? Just give it more time to cook. Maybe we're going to throw more Appas away and more fucking archbishops will die. Maybe the temptation of Subaru is still to come, and the Appa will be offered once more. Let's keep an eye out for that, right? Well, season two, maybe the theory will fall flat and this is just like a season one specific thing where the animators specifically went out to, you know, put in these symbolisms and little Easter eggs to relate it to the origin sins in the Garden of Eden. But, you know, even if it doesn't happen in season two, it did happen in season one. And I think he is fucking cooking. In a low enough moment, it may prove tempting indeed. All right. Amazing. Dude, amazing video. I, that, 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 I, I love tinfoil conspiracy theories like this, right? Even if it may not be true, as long as you have, like, the logic and random, you know, uh, half-truths to prove, your, illustrate your point, I'm so down to listen. And yes, I'm so down. Here's the video, guys. Please go like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't. But, like, that's a crazy thing. The summary of the video basically is, Appas are always there, right? And if you think about Appas and... Uh, the Bible, Origin Sin, Garden of Eden, Forbidden Fruit. Every time you have Appa, bad things happen. Every time you discard Appa, good things happen. And the forbidden knowledge for, you know, attaining, you know, taking a bite into it or just like... Sinning, right? The equivalent of Eve, Eve eating the forbidden fruit and Subaru, you know, having this power is the memories. That's the forbidden knowledge. I think it makes sense, but again... Just because this happened doesn't mean that Tape specifically went out to do it or like like it, it could have been either the anime uh, directors and the animators that decided to do their own thing or maybe Tape did say, you know, hey, anime guys, let's let's just try to do a little funny thing with the Appas to relate the origin sin story from Bible to the seven deadly sins. But that's amazing. And in season two, we'll definitely be checking out for Appas and we'll check out some other ReZero videos from him too. Sorry, RE0.